Many creeps behind the scene of... As children, for many of us, there was absolutely nothing better than waking up on a summer morning, going to the TV, and turning on our favorite TV show to watch. Scrolling down to Nickelodeon and seeing Drake and Josh, or <coughs> Zoe 101, iCarly, Victorious, Ned's The Classified, Pair of Kings. The list goes on and on. It was the early 2000s, and we had not a care in the world. And at the time, we had no idea about the absolutely vile things happening behind the camera to many of our favorite actors and actresses. And we couldn't imagine the horror they went through because of some very sick and twisted individuals. With a new documentary releasing soon, exposing Nickelodeon, and the recent news coming out in that documentary from Drake Bell, I decided it was time to make a- I haven't watched it. Yep. video consolidating the information and the allegations against former directors, staff, creators, and the weirdos on these Nickelodeon shows. Today, I will be exposing the scumbags behind the scenes of Nickelodeon and shoving their awful deeds right into the light so y'all can see them. The goal for this video is for their crimes not to be just swept under the rug like nothing happened, which is I'm sure is what they would want, but I want this video to be a spotlight on how bad these people are and how sick they are. Let's get into it, shall we? We shall, guys. As of two days ago, when I'm writing the script, a documentary titled <laughs> Quiet on Set was leaked into its release date, which is on March 17th. The purpose of the documentary is to expose the people behind Nickelodeon for these abhorrent acts of physical, sexual, and emotional abuse on their child actors. In the documentary, actor Drake Bell, known for playing in Drake and Josh and in The Amanda Show, claims he was essayed while filming at the age of 15. This assault was done by the dialogue coach on The Amanda Show named Brian Peck. However, this is not the first time Peck would do something like this, nor would it be the last. You see, Peck and Wait, Peck like Josh Peck's f dad? ...himself pled no contest in 2004 for performing a lewd act with a 15-year-old. We would figure out later that the 15-year-old was Drake. But later, Beck pled no contest for oral copulation with another minor. At the time, he only spent 16 months in prison for these heinous crimes. Peck worked on many Nickelodeon shows in the early 2000s and the late 90s, and he had a multitude of other projects outside of the network. So you tell me this sexually assaulted somebody and still is working for Nickelodeon. Yeah, bro. That he was in. He was an actor, a voice actor, a model for video games, and he's been in over 50 movies, including the X-Men, X2, he was in Holes, TV show Good Burger, The Amanda Show, The Sweet Life of Zack and Cody, Boy Meets World, and many others. And the whole time he was on these shows and movies, he was a sick freak. Drake Bell stated that the assault happened numerous times while being on cast for The Amanda Show from 1999 to 2002. He was only 15 years old, he said. <coughs> When Peck was arrested in 2003 and charged with the 11 charges of abuse, and he was also labeled on the sex offender registry, we didn't know at the time that it was Drake Bell being one of the victims. Even though we know this now, we still won't be able to ask so the full ugly. story until the documentary comes out. But as of right now, it's looking like I will be sick to my stomach on March 17th. One would only be able to hope that this kind of thing wasn't a repeat occurrence behind the scenes with other people at Nickelodeon. Sadly, this is just the tip of the iceberg, and the horror runs much deeper. It is widely known that DS, who directed and created many Nickelodeon shows, had a very toxic, very bizarre work environment for those shows. I can't and I won't say his full name because YouTube actually tends to demonetize creators who say his name and talk about him. Now, it's not about the money for me. If this gets demonetized, it's whatever. The point is, if it does get demonetized, YouTube will not push it to the algorithm because it considers it unsafe for most viewers. And if this doesn't get pushed in the algorithm, you just say you're trying to make money. It's YouTube. Everybody's trying to make money. For them, that's less light being shown on these freaks. Anyways, DS created at Nick's most popular shows, like The Amanda Show, Zoe 101, iCarly, Victorious, shows that millions loved to watch every single- Bro, I used to love iCarly, bro. 
Like that kind of ruins your childhood when you see like this, like the, what was going on behind the scenes. Well, day. The first person to expose DS for his strange and weird abuse came in the form of Jeanette McCurdy's memoir titled, I'm Glad My Mom Died. In the memoir, she detailed many uncomfortable experiences she had while filming iCarly, as well as Sam and Cat. She referred to DS I'm as a my powerful figure and gave him the nickname, The Creator. It's assumed that she called him the creator because of NDAs and the legal issues that might come from outing him outright. She spoke of this creator as a controller and a source of emotional abuse, saying things like she was pressured into drinking alcohol while underage and she was getting yelled. Oh, her mom abused her. Oh, that's that that's loudly fucked. during kissing that's scenes. Fucked. She also says the creator explicitly asked that <coughs> bikinis be included in the wardrobe for the talent. That way he could see these children in them. She went on to say she was forced to try on this clothing in front of many people that she wasn't comfortable with, to the point where her own body physically shunned away and she tried to cover herself up. Jeanette McCurdy had a very tumultuous and toxic relationship with her mother at the time, and it's thought that the lack of a strong parental figure protecting her allowed DS to abuse her mentally and somewhat physically, forcing her character Sam to gorge herself and eat over and over again while Jeanette was facing these issues in real life with her image and her food consumption. Essentially, he didn't seem to take a care at all about what was going on behind the scenes and used it as a sort of weapon against her. These statements are sadly commonplace for many young actresses and actors from that time period. Like, bro, you didn't, like, take a hint that this weird from a picture like this like bro just look at dude who the f even smiles like that he just looks like that creepy ass f old man that's always in the background of pictures period with people who worked on these sets with ds it really doesn't stop with physical abuse or mental abuse of his actors it goes even further with deep-seated misogyny and racism. Insider talked to several racism. writers on various shows that DS created, and one writer named Kayla Alpert recalled a moment when she said DS told her that women weren't funny and asked her to name one funny woman. Alright, 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 Dan Snyder is an evil guy, and he is a s*** defender, but yeah, we can agree on some things, alright? That... And another writer on the same show revealed that DS rarely hired women because they didn't like having female writers in the writer's room. Reports and inquiries kept finding that there was no proof of SA or that kind of abuse with Dan, but that he was aggressive and yelled a lot on set. But with so many people claiming physical abuse, they're not all lying. It was common practice for DS to yell and scream at his child actors. In one account, on set of all that, Angelique Bates was having trouble filming a part of the show, and DS yelled at her so hard that she ran off the set crying. Many things like this are a repeat occurrence with different actors of different levels. You have people that were famous for these shows, like the lead actors, and then other people, like writers and creators that made the show, all of them keep saying the same thing. All of this leading to DS and his crew taking advantage of these kids. DS claims that there were caregivers and parents always on set, but I'm sure they didn't have a say in anything, and it just left DS and his crew using these children like cash cows and exploiting them physically and emotionally. Another actress, Alexa Nicholas, who played Nicole on Zoe 101, described working on that set as traumatizing, alleging that she was held in a room alone and verbally abused many times by DS. And another writer that worked on Zoe 101 called it a maddening, disgusting, controlling little bubble. All of them referring to DS and his methods, of course, as cruel and unusual. They didn't have to say his name for us to know who it was. Daniela Monet was another actress, and she played Trina on Victorious, which was Victorious' older sister. She told Business Insider several years ago that some of the characters' outfits were not age-appropriate and further expressed anger and dissatisfaction with the over-sexualized parts of the show. At the time, we didn't really see what was going on as fans and watchers, but when you look back at these shows now, 
you see all these strange, you know, feet shots and licking and kissing, and then you realize these these kids are underage. These are like 15 year olds, and their feet are being like touched and licked for minutes at a time. And there's so many more bizarre things. Yo, that's bad, bro. Like, and you know what's the worst part about it, bro? Like, it was so young, we didn't even know what this meant. At all, bro. Like, I was so oblivious when I just watched these shows. And all in all, if you watch it again, I'm sure you're going to realize how creepy it was. That's why I don't want to watch, like, old shows I used to watch. It's bad, bro. ...that were shown on screen. And now, we can look back and see, yeah, there was something going on. DS was also exposed for requesting massages from adult female colleagues in 2000. This was thrown into a hostile workplace legal claim that same year, and that's how we figured out about it. DS has since acknowledged that he asked for massages, but he claims that he, quote, regrets ever asking anyone. Which, like, yeah, you sound like a freak. You are a freak. DS and Nick officially cut ties in 2018, which marked the end of his 25-year tenure. The reasoning for the termination was because of the growing number of allegations and outings of physical, emotional, and essay. Like Nickelodeon didn't know what the f*** was going on. The f*** while on set. Alexa Nicholas's and Jeanette McCurdy's statements, of course, spearheading that movement. Just two years ago, on August 25th, 2022, Alexa Nicholas joined in on a protest outside of Nick's headquarters in Burbank, California. She was holding a sign that said, Nickelodeon did not protect me. In an interview, she says that she didn't feel protected at Nick as a child. And on Instagram Live one time, she said that she's demanding Nickelodeon starts protecting children and not <coughs> protecting the predators. Real. In other sad news that is unrelated to this video regarding Alexa, she seems to be dealing with a very real and very dangerous stalker as of the last year. I hope she gets the peace she deserves after these many years of abuse from all sides, and I hope everything works out for the best. It's probably Dan Snyder with his f***ing hitman. The allegations go even deeper with DS than what I've mentioned already, with people speculating that he even got actresses pregnant and then paid them to terminate the child and to keep quiet. There are several rumors that DS got Amanda Bynes pregnant and that he got Jamie Lynn Spears pregnant. He they were underage. He has not been charged with these crimes and these are only allegations as of this video, but with all the other six sh he's done, is it really that far out of the question? Now, there are many supporters of DS who claim that nothing sexual ever happened on set, and it was just DS trying a little too hard to be friends with the child stars. But to those people, I say, abuse, whether it's physical or sexual, is not just going to happen in broad daylight oh, for hundreds to see. The abuse likely happened under the cover of darkness, where only he had the power. That's what these sick individuals do. They want it all to themselves with no repercussions in sight. But again, it does not stop there and not by a long shot. The rabbit hole gets deeper. Marty Weiss is a name that you've probably never heard of. He was a longtime manager of young talent in the industry, specifically working with Nickelodeon. And since he's on this list, you can guess where this is going. 47 year old Weiss. Yeah, this looks evil bro i ain't gonna lie ice was sentenced on july 1st 2019 for two counts of lewd acts with a minor under 14 years of age he faced eight felony counts for assaulting one of his former clients the child who is the client is an unidentified male and this unidentified male told police that weiss essayed him 30 to 40 times over a three-year period starting when the boy was just 11 years old Yo. And because of this, police suspected that there were other victims as well. Yo, this, this is a man nigga, who is... This is done. This had to be on the Epstein list, bro. Ain't no way. That's like a record of being a sexual offender. That's actually insane. The entire job was to be a safe haven for young actors and actresses in the industry. He was in a position of authority and was supposed to be somebody that these kids could look to for safety and guidance. And he used this position to take advantage of these children and do horrible. Yeah, bro, this nigga needs to get f***ed in prison, bro. I hope I hope they have a 24-7 torture camera on this nigga. 
in prison, bro. Like, suffer, bro. Like, where the Mexican cartel at when you need them, bro? They need to start rubbing this head in bleach and ripping his skin open and start brushing his skin with nails. Awful things. For all I just mentioned, Weiss pleaded no contest and was sentenced to one year in county jail and five years on probation. All right, bro. Yeah, bro. America runs off, off children, bro. I ain't gonna lie, bro. What did Dunkin' Donuts say? American runs off children. They're like, this is bad, bro. A year in prison. But I know that got arrested for years and years over marijuana, bro. But he was eligible for parole on June 1st, 2020 because of good behavior. Good behavior. He was registered as a SA offender and is not allowed in the presence of anyone under 18. For me, this sounds like a slap on the wrist for an awful crime. And I cannot believe this guy got less than a year for these crimes. The young male victim, who still remains unnamed, said that Weiss told him, quote, what they were doing was common practice in the entertainment industry. I mean, I'm sure it was. And if the victim were to tell anyone, it would ruin the victim's career. Yeah, that's Hurt them both, end quote. Weiss saying this to the young male victim essentially proves how gross people are in the entertainment industry. Who knows how many more people there could be doing this stuff that just happened. Yeah, they need to make murder legal for these I ain't gonna lie, bro. They need to dead make murder legal for these Marty Weiss ran his own talent company for years and used it to get in contact with minors like this. He only dissolved the company a few years ago when he was arrested, and then once again got off with a slap on the wrist. And now he walks free. Oh. Jason Handy. Jason Handy worked alongside DS on The Amanda Show and The All That Show as a crew member. On April 12, 2003, he was arrested for performing lewd acts with a child under 14 years old. The assault happened three years beforehand in 2000, when he kissed and touched a nine-year-old girl in Glendale, California on set. He was released on bail later the same day he was arrested on April 12th. Four days later, after he got off on bail, the L.A. Niggas is kissing little girls on set. Bro, niggas is kissing little girls on set. What is good with niggas? LAPD arrested him again on a no-bail felony warrant and charged him with accosting, soliciting, and enticing a child under 16 with the intent to make a child commit an immoral act. Pretty much, they realized that they let this freak leave on bail, and they arrested him again on stronger charges. An investigation was then opened into Jason Handy, and many, many, many truths were unearthed. It was discovered that Jason Handy attempted to prey on kids at his church, in his neighborhood, and even on the internet. Yeah, and he bro. specifically used his connections at Nickelodeon and his connections to DS to get in contact with young children. I think I literally might be... It sounds like Nickelodeon was a f***ing ring, bro. I ain't gonna lie, bro. On God, they need to just shut down the whole network. Like, just shut down the whole f***ing network. I'm sure there was some some evil lure behind SpongeBob too, bro. Just shut down the whole f***ing network. He was then put in prison for six years for the charges against him. Which, again, a slap on the wrist. Six years for literally assaulting a child, but whatever. And maybe to your sh- I ain't gonna lie, bro. Cartoon Network better, bro. I, I regret growing up watching Nickelodeon and Disney, bro. Like, Disney, you catching a stray, too. Fuck y'all, yeah, Cartoon Network really better, bro. I ain't heard no allegations with Cartoon Network, just besides the fact that Courage the Cowardly Dog is a weird-ass show. Shock, or maybe to your not shock, this would not be the last time Jason Handy struck. You see, a decade later, in 2014, after he was already out of prison, he was arrested in Guilford, North Carolina. You know what I realized? Cartoon Network never had, like, shows about like people in real life it was just like animated shows oh cartoon network yo what the f yo on god i get it now on three counts of indecent liberties with a child and two counts of s offender violation you remember when i said that they made it illegal for him to be with a minor yeah we see how well that worked and as of the last article i could find jason was being held on a one million dollar bond 
I can't find any further documentation of him being charged with these crimes in North Carolina, but situations like this prove that releasing people back into society does not always go well. He was in prison for six years and he got right back out and did the same thing across the country in a different state. And the fact that he worked with DS and used him specifically to get into contact with children literally makes my stomach churn. Man, Lastly for this video is a Nickelodeon worker convicted of assault on a child while working there. The man's name was Ezel Channel, and Channel was actually a production assistant on Nickelodeon shows, including ones under DS. And on December 16th, 2005, Channel or Chanel, I don't know how it's pronounced, but I don't think the sick freak gets that liberty. Channel was arrested on suspicion of molesting a 14-year-old boy at Nick Animation Studios while he was working there. He was charged with two felony counts of lewd acts with a child and was jailed on a $500,000 bond. Eventually, Channel would be sentenced to seven years and four months for his crimes, and it would be uncovered that he showed pornography to this 14 year old boy but i was actually able to find the police case for azelle yeah bro these nickelodeon is burning to hell bro if you work at nickelodeon just get ready to go to hell bro and it gets even worse than that so it turns out that azelle was a registered sex offender before he was hired at nickelodeon Yo. before these crimes happened in 2005 he was on the list and Nickelodeon hired him. And that's what this case file is about. His first crime happened in 2002, what which was three these crimes I just told you about. In the Bro. case file, it claims that Channel met his victim through his own friend. The victim was his friend's godson. Izell was walking around his neighborhood when he saw the victim, and Izell asked if the victim could help him move some furniture in his house. The victim was a boy of just 13 years old. While inside Azel's apartment, sitting on his couch, he showed the boy his nether regions. And then he asked the boy to show him his. He then proceeded. Yeah, bro. Niggas and Nickelodeon are done, bro. Th this shit's a literal sex trafficking ring, bro. We're talking about a f Nickelodeon video, and this on the bottom, it says Fifth Predator, bro. Like, bro, at this point, if you hung out with them, you're guilty by association, bro proceeded to touch the boy in an inappropriate way and ask the boy to do the same. This was all in 2002, and the boy eventually told his parents, and Izell was charged with offender crimes then. Then, of course, three years later, in 2005, when he was working at Nick, the events I told you first conspired. He assaulted a young boy and showed him pornography. This is kind of similar to Jason Handy. Jason Handy was charged and arrested for his crimes and then released only to commit the crimes once again. And Izell Channel was charged and registered as a sex offender only to be released and work for Nickelodeon and commit the crimes again. Nickelodeon hired this guy knowing he did all that and it led to another innocent- Yeah, Nickelodeon's done. Nickelodeon's done, bro. Nickelodeon is done. Like, like they hiring knowing they're sex offenders. Yo, they need to shut down this network, bro. Innocent victim being abused physically, emotionally, and sexually. In conclusion, the early to mid 2000s and late 2010s was a very, very dark time for Nickelodeon and their talent. Even though we were all watching these TV shows being produced by DS and his crew of pedophiles, we had no idea about the details that I talked about today. And now that all of this has been aired out over the years, it really puts a blotch on the innocence behind those shows, the childhood naivety. It makes it hard to enjoy them as much when you realize what's going on behind the scenes and how miserable these kids were. And then for DS to stay on the company until the late 2010s, even after the allegations and the harsh criticism, it just doesn't look good. It looks actually awful, but we can only hope that Nick stops hiring pedophiles. Bro, Nickelodeon is the pedophile ring, bro. Like, they know what the f*** they're doing. And maybe, just maybe that'll stop the abuse. But as Marty Weiss told his victim, what they were doing was common practice in the entertainment industry. And if the victim were to tell anyone, it would ruin their career and hurt them both. Thank you for watching till the end of the video. I wanted to upload this to give kind of a one-stop shop for- Yeah, it got me f***ed up, bro. Ever let my child be on a movie set or Nickelodeon set. What the f***? Drake Bell on attending.
It was a different time, so I think it was a little easier to go to and from a courthouse and not worry about Twitter that night or TMZ paparazzis being there. On the day of sentencing for Brian, I get to the courthouse. Bro, ain't this a sex offender too, my Like, am I missing something? It was the most unbelievable thing I'd ever seen. His entire side of the courtroom was full. Full. There were definitely some recognizable faces on that side of the room. And no, bro, you stupid. Do your research. All right. Drake Bell receives two years on probation of child endangerment. And my side was uh, me, my mom and my brother. Brian had been convicted, but getting all of this support from a lot of people in the industry, and yeah, I was pretty shocked. Oh, Brian packs the signal. <coughs> my mom got up, she had a statement. I wasn't going to address Brian. There was no no reason to. I addressed my statement to everyone in the room. I looked at all of them. And I just said, how dare you? And I said, you will forever have the memory of sitting in this courtroom and defending this person. And I will forever have the memory of the person you're defending violating me. Yeah, that's crazy. And doing unspeakable acts and crimes. And that's what I'll remember. Yeah, it's fucked. I was literally fucked up. Dude. Meine Arbeit für richtig Geld Run it, run it, racks, put it in the two Shaking it, hoes in and out they dunes Bringing it, God, ten of us do it